The pandemic is having a, a severe impact on the mental health of NHS staff. According to new research, with half of those in the front line suffering problems like stress or trauma. Hardly surprising. Well, with the help of Love Island's Dr Alex George, we are looking at ways that we can all help in our new campaign, You Care, We Care. Before we talk to Alex, though, well, he has been chatting with some of his colleagues on the front line. Hello everyone, you join me here at Lewisham Hospital in the Rhesus Department at the start of my shift. We are expecting of course that things are going to get busy, but while it's quiet I thought I'd take a moment to speak to some of my colleagues and get kind of an insight into what the mental health aspects of this pandemic are for staff. I'm taking a lot of um, comfort in talking to colleagues about it every day. We're all going through it together, we're all seeing the same things together. Um, we're seeing a lot of sad things happen and we all see this normally anyway day to day, but not on this scale. I think yeah. you're likely to see stress and things building. Yeah, you know, for sure. Work. I think generally clinicians tend to deal with the problem at hand first and then deal with the emotional aftermath after because we have we have to focus on what we're doing first. Um, and I can definitely see how this would probably build up for a lot of people um, across the spectrum of healthcare workers and people in society who are also key workers who aren't necessarily healthcare workers. I think the patients, particularly the recess cases, which we're getting in, which tend to be the patients that are more unwell, um, we're not able to get family members in, which we would usually, so when they are obviously scared and um, in a time where they're not used to being very, very sick, they're, we're not able to have that sort of face-to-face -face connection with them and also um, they're not able to be surrounded themselves by their family members, which I think makes it much more difficult. I agree. Some of the things that personally for myself that I've seen, I will remember for my lifetime really, and it's been really difficult. Of course, we do see how you know difficult things in A&E, but it's the volume of unwell patients that's been really upsetting. As nurses, you're used to caring for patients and providing you know the emotional support as well to families. There's an element that's kind of pulled back a bit, isn't it? Because of the PPE and the gowns, the restrictions in terms of visiting. How much does that affect you, you know, in, in your mental health? For me, I always look, um, look after my mental health by looking forward to my day offs. Yeah. I have day offs, I spend my time with my family. Yeah. And I have a habit of waking up early. I have yeah. a list of the things that I, uh, I am thankful of. Yeah. It says that um, if you trade your expectations with your appreciations, you're always going to be happy. Having talked to my colleagues, my, my friends in, in, in the hospital, both doctors and nurses, it's been really interesting to get an insight to their perspective. It's so, so important, however, that we do support staff across the NHS in what is going to be uh, a difficult few months and years ahead. You know, with everything that we experience, mental health is so, so important and looking after our staff on the front line is vital. Well, Dr. Alex joins me now. Thank you for doing that for us. It's a real insight and so interesting to hear all of you talking together because it is tough physically. We've seen that, you know, you've seen when you wear the gear and you're all bruised and it's tough, really hard long shifts, but mentally too. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me again on the show. It's nice to speak to you both. Um, it, I think it was really interesting to speak to various staff members and really ask them how they're feeling and how they're coping. And I, I think what I felt and the feedback I kind of got was you really get ups and downs, you know, you experience certain things, you see certain things and it really affects you um, and, you know, you have good days and, and bad days, but ultimately um, it's the kind of seeing these things day in, day out that I think, you know, can have an impact on, uh, on your mental health as well as your uh, uh, physical health as well. And it's something we really need to recognise and make sure, you know, we look after our staff properly. So how are you doing? Because you need to talk about these things, don't you? And I know that you, you talk to your colleagues, but oftentimes you just don't have the time to do that. Is there somebody that you have got that you can speak to um, and just basically, you know, offload? Yeah, I mean, there have been some difficult um, times. And I'm very, I'm quite open with things. And there's been days that I've been kind of, you know, like very upset and kind of in tears with some of the stuff we've seen, you know, and that's being completely honest. Um, you know, and I'm quite open to speak to my colleagues at work. We've got a wellness room, which actually we um, can kind of go to. We've seen something very difficult. And I have time, a little bit of time alone uh, or speak to, um, you know, a colleague or a friend and, and, and kind of go through what you're experiencing. Family are very important too. Um, my girlfriend's been amazing. I've spoken to her um, about certain things as well and kind of shared some of that 
um, you know, kind of stress and, uh, you know, emotion as well. But I must say that, you know, there's a real positive side as well. You know, we, at work, we do really stick together. We're as positive as we can be. And, uh, and the patients are fantastic too, because they actually provide us support in a lot of ways as well. And the way that they're so, you know, grateful of our help and that, you know, they try and bring their you know warmth even in difficult times as well is, is actually really inspiring no that's true and then i suppose when when you do see people getting better you know because unfortunately we do tend to focus on you know the, the very sad aspects of people being incredibly mm. ill or even dying mm. but when you see somebody getting better and you nurse them back to health that there can't be a feeling like it definitely i mean these cases i've seen of patients who i was really worried about i didn't know if they were going to make it uh, and they went to intensive care and then i followed their journey and found out that they were um, discharged from the hospital and went home. And to be honest, there's no better feeling. There's, there's no better feeling than that. You think, you know, we, we've managed to kind of work together as a, a team, as a hospital, as, uh, you know, a healthcare system to help people and, and get back to, 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 to their homes and their families. And that's what really, you know, is so rewarding. And that's what keeps us going, ultimately. You that's know, what, through the dark times, it's the good moments. That's what it's all about, isn't it, Alex? But even in the medical mm -hmm. profession, it's true, isn't it, that there's still this feeling that, you know, when the going gets tough, uh, the tough get going. And it's mm -hmm. so easy to, to, to work and work and work, and then you go home, you don't speak to anybody, uh, and it catches up with you eventually. And, and you know, you, everybody needs to share mm -hmm. their emotions. We're human beings, after all, and that must be... It must be hugely beneficial to be able to talk to people share your emotions and and get it all out definitely i think dr hillary i think you're 100 percent right you know the in a sense that the carers also need caring for as well and um you know the risk of having burnout in the coming months and years if you kind of don't address um those things that you know is, is quite high I, I i really hope that any colleagues kind of watching you know feel comfortable enough to ask and reach out for help i know that the samaritans are uh, running a, a helpline for NHR, NHS staff and um, specifically there are you know within trust there should be support as well but I think nationally it's so so important that we actually look at this and go these are unprecedented times yes of course we know that NHS staff work under a lot of pressure and stress as it is mm. but we do need to really focus about how we're going to look after people and make sure that ultimately we're there to help people when they need it. No, you're, you're right. You're absolutely right. It's, it's, it is absolutely vital. And we've got to recognise that as a nation, that we are going to have a problem. You know, there will be people with, with PTSD, basically, yeah. the kind of things that the armed forces have to face. And, and in similar terms, you know, we, we expect our armed forces to be strong and brave, and of course they are. But again, as, as Hilary says, they're human beings just like you, just like people that are working in care homes, and they need that support. So really it's down to us as well to make sure that we, we support you. Yeah, and there's always yeah. this culture, wasn't there, Alex, that, that doc doctors were unable to take time off when they needed to because they were worried about their colleagues having to do extra work. Yeah, definitely. I think there's a big worry about that. What's difficult in the department as well is clearly we're having... Um, staff members who have coronavirus or have suspected coronavirus and have to take time off. So there's a lot of pressure on the departments to make sure that they're staffed uh, fully. And yes, of course, for, for, for mental health reasons, there's a lot of pressure that maybe, you know, you're not, you don't take time off. And I think there's obviously, you know, um, kind of as uh, you heard uh, uh, Sana say in, in, the, in, the, in the videotape, you know, doctors often deal with things, the problem now and kick the can slightly down the road when it comes to uh, you know, the mental health. But I think we need to actually look at things now and really make sure we are taking it kind of seriously over these next few weeks or months to avoid burnout and ultimately losing, you know, good staff from, from the front line. Sure. And are you feeling OK just now? I mean, I know you're right there at the sharp end and you're doing an amazing job and we're so very, very proud of you and very thankful. Um, but, you know, you, you have to take care of yourself. It's like what you said. Yeah, no, thank you. I'm very grateful. I think um, what, I, what I've really been inspired by is some of the amazing stories. And I've got to say, Colonel Tom has absolutely blown me away with what he's done. And actually, I've got to say, we talk about him a lot in the department. And, you know, when he started the walk, we were like, oh, my goodness, like, you know, this, this, this gentleman is, is so inspiring. I just cannot believe that he's raised now 30 million, uh, you know, live on live on air even announced that and it's just it's just incredible and we are so inspired and to do that if one person has done that it go it you know makes us feel like come on we can do this sure. we can keep going and we'll get through it oh i know it's it, it has just cheered us all up that's for sure and of course tonight at eight o'clock we'll all be clapping nhs workers and the, you know the, the care home workers and all of the people in the front line and and do you find on a friday morning do you guys talk about that and say oh did you see this or, and does it make you feel a bit better Oh, definitely. I mean, I, I was on shift uh, 
two weeks ago and um, we just popped out to see the, the clap outside. The police were, were clapping and, and distancing, etc. but clapping. And it, it really, I was like choking up. I was like, this is, you know, this is such a, an incredible feeling. I think I can't under, under or over exaggerate how much um, a difference it really makes to have, you know, the country behind us, everyone kind of pulling together the support, you know, in different sectors within the hospital and outside the hospital as well. It's been uh, remarkable. And I think we are in this together as a nation and we'll get through it together as a nation. Well, we will. And we've got people like you. Thank you so much for Thank joining us. We really appreciate it. We'll talk to you real soon. Stay safe. Thank you, Alex. both. Thank you. Take, Take care. care. What a smashing young man. He is. He really is. And he's, he's doing, doing a great job there. He really is. Really, job. really is. We'll put lots of information about looking after your mental health on our website. And if you are working on the front line at the moment, we'd really like to hear from you. So let us know what you're doing for your well-being, and we can share it with everyone else. We'd love to get your messages and, and your videos as well, just to see how people are doing. Yeah, that you would know, be nice. Yeah. Take the pulse well, a little bit here. like we're that. We're here to listen. Absolutely.